Welcome everyone to the Side Draft Podcast and welcome to another race review. Today we're reviewing the Cup Series race from Texas Motor Speedway and it was a fairly interesting race. Yeah, very fair, interesting race. Uh, you know, a lot of new people leading, uh, all kinds of action going on and uh, qualifying was kind of messed up too a little bit. Yeah, it's just about the same mess that we had at Fontana except people actually had a lap in this time. So. Yeah, the, they knew they had to get a lap in this time, but uh, yeah, now they had the new rules. They couldn't clog the the, uh, the center, and they got a staging area, and a lot of I think even a lot of the drivers were confused about it. Yeah, and they they say it's all the team's fault, but really, you know, you want to get that step above everyone, yeah. and you know, no one's going to go out there willingly. To, first yeah. and get the worst part of it yeah so. this is where everybody gets to be real gentlemen no you go first no you go first no <laughs> no you go first but you know you really don't want to be the first one out you just want to be like the fifth or sixth one out so when one moves then another moves then it's just kind of messed up yeah we did see uh daniel Suarez try to go by himself yeah i think they had a very good strategy uh, wait for everybody to turn their engines off. And he just takes off. For, don't give him no time to, to catch up to him. And, and, and to qualify fourth, that was real impressive. Yeah, and I think it really shows that we can have single car qualifying because he qualified fourth by yeah. himself, uh, beat out most most of the top, top 12. Yeah, then it's real confusing when uh, a caution comes out or... So you didn't make the line, or you did make the line, and people behind you, uh, their time count, but yours didn't, and, and some of people, some drivers were slowing down, so it was really confusing even for the drivers to get through. Yeah, and if we did have single car qualifying, would not have that issue. Yeah, and plus you, you can better see the sponsors on even, the, even a lot of other teams. Yeah, and you get maybe introduced to a driver that you wouldn't necessarily watch out on the racetrack. Yeah. So, you know, I think single car qualifying is the way to go with uh, the mile and a half, so at least for now, because if if you try to fix the group qualifying, all it's going to do is create rules upon rules upon rules, and we'll, we'll get so many weird names like clogging and staging or staging areas, so... I think single single car qualifying, even though they say is not as exciting, uh, which does qualifying necessarily need to be exciting? Yeah, I know even Clip Boyer got pretty upset over qualifying because it looked like Ryan Newman clogged the middle. He couldn't uh, get out, but he finally made it through. (laughs) Yeah. So. Someone finally called the plumber, apparently. Yeah. So, yeah, he was pretty adamant about it. yeah <laughs> pretty pretty angry about yeah. all that um but after all of, all of that was settled jimmy johnson would be on the pole william byron outside pole and you know that would be a good shot in the arm for hendrick motorsports yeah really strong showing for the chevrolets uh we know we hadn't seen a lot from them lately it's must have been the toyos and the fords but uh now get some life in the chevrolets and then uh, ryan newman who was clogging <laughs> on bit road he would fail tech i guess he clogged technical inspection <laughs> as well <laughs> uh, so he'd have to start at the rear and alex bowman who crashed during qualifying would also have to start at the rear and that's interesting because he would never battle his way up to the front while jimmy johnson and chase elliott and even william byron who started towards the front stayed up to to the front until uh, some pit strategies happened so with this package, you know, if you're not first, you're theoretically not going to get up there. Yeah, the only way to really get, uh, or some some drivers can, can come through the field. Uh, more likely, you just get bogged down in the back. Um, sometimes strategy come to play, and that got them to the, the track position they needed uh, to do well. So. so Jimmy Johnson would lead first few laps and then there would be a caution for Eric, Eric Jones and then William Byron Kyle Busch, Hemrick and Harvick would all pit but Kyle Busch would miss his pit stop 
Yeah, I ain't sure. If, uh, I believe his team wasn't really ready for him. Didn't know he's going to come in or didn't even see where his pit stall was. I ain't sure what communication that was. But he just drove on by <laughs> and lost the position. <laughs> yeah, so I mean, it wasn't too bad of a penalty, really. But no. uh, not something you see every day out of a veteran of the sport. Yeah, and he was one of the cars that could really come through the field, and he was making some crazy moves out there, and I was like, man. Yeah, I was surprised there was no accidents from all those crazy moves. Yeah, he was diving in real hard in, in the turns, but really he lost more coming off the turn, so uh, it kind of hurt him on his exit. And then uh, Logano and Chase Elliott would battle Jimmy Johnson for the lead, but just like I said, you know, you can't really pass – especially the leader in that clean air you'd have to use a lap car as a pick or use some pit strategy to jump ahead of them uh, because you're just not going to get a run unless someone's right up behind you yeah and jimmy johnson's car his it really loved the, the clean air he looked really strong up front uh but later on once he got bogged in the back he just couldn't really make a lot of move and jimmy would get up to a second lead the Denny Hamlin, as the pit cycle would start, he would miss pit road, lose uh, a ton of time because it takes forever to get the cars back up to speed. So he couldn't just, you know, drive like normal around the next lap. It would be a really slow lap. I'm really surprised he gained his way back. Yeah, was, we thought it was it'd be, it'd just pretty much in his day. But and then during uh, the pit cycle, Joe Logano would jump over Jimmy Johnson. Yeah, he finally got the lead, and uh, he pretty much held it for a while. Yeah, that's uh, that's that Team Penske uh, uh, pit stops. You know, they're really great at that. Yeah. Uh, pit crew's really great, and it's going to be tough to beat that team on pit road. Mm -hmm. Unless you're the 18, because that team, 18 and the 22 is uh, the best pit yeah, crew right about top notch right there. They're class of the field. And Denny Hamlin, when he would eventually get back around to get down pit road, too fast exiting, and that was during a green flag stop. So it was like, okay, he's really not going to come back now. Yeah. And then William Byron would lead off uh, the pit road. And, you know, was wondering, can those who pitted in the caution before, could they make it to the end? Yeah. Which uh, they would, most of them wouldn't. They would all come in, I think. Yeah, they all come at the end of the stage, I believe, so... Then Alex Bowman would have a commitment line violation, uh, so that would be a tough penalty for him. Yeah. Then Joe Logano would win stage one. Tons of stage wins for him. Yeah, he's really racking them up this year. Then stage two, it would be Kurt Busch, Truex Boyer, and those who pitted just before the stage caution, they would stay out. And then Brad Keselowski would have to go in the garage for losing, uh, I believe it was some gears towards the back of the car. Yeah, he just uh, didn't have any power or something. I mean, I don't know if they just changed the axles or if they changed the, the rear gears, but for some reason it just went, it just lost power. So it'd be Kurt Busch versus uh, Martin Truex on the restart. Truex would get the jump. And we didn't see a lot out of Truex in this race. Not a whole lot. I mean, he's maintaining more or less, but he ain't really showing a lot of strength yet. Yeah, uh, still trying to figure it out, uh, just like a lot of people. Uh, but he does have uh, teammates with two wins each, uh, besides Eric Jones, to you know, lean on with that re that regard. Yeah, even though Eric Jones spun earlier, uh, he pretty much rebounded a uh, good finish. Then Kyle Busch would eventually get up there to take the lead, and Chase Elliott would be up there to battle Kyle Busch. And then Chase Elliott would take over uh, Kyle Busch, which is something we hadn't really seen was someone passing the leader. Yeah. And Kyle didn't really have a strong car at this point in time. He was really complaining complaining about it, so maybe that had something to do with it. Uh, but, you know, it's still impressive to pass the leader at these types of racetracks. Yeah. Which is kind of sad to say. <laughs> yeah, you don't see many people, many of them uh, passing the leader. It's just really the arrow push off of it and yeah. the clean air and the first the leader it's really hard to get around which I'm not I can't really look at the the data about the package or anything I think the main thing that causes that is the big spoiler yes it causes a causes a great draft but 
also it creates a great arrow push. Yeah. And then Joe Logano would make his way up to second. Kurt Busch would be the first to pit. Then Kyle Larson would hit the wall and cause a caution. And Kyle Busch would stay out and pretty much get lucky with the lead. Yeah, somehow Kyle Busch always gets lucky with these cautions, hitting the right time and uh, staying on the right lap. And I mean, I'll see how he does it. <laughs> yeah, even happened in the Xfinity race. Yeah. Got really lucky with the caution. Uh, so that green car really proves it. It's lucky. I guess so. And then uh, Chase Elliott, Logano, Harvick, they'd all get pretty much uh, a few spots lower than what they should have been because of the caution happening during the pit cycle. Yeah. And then Hamlin would get fuel only on the next uh, pit stop after the caution, and Joe Logano, uncontrolled tire. Yes, we had a couple of uncontrolled tires that wouldn't... I'm not sure how some of that come out. <laughs> yeah, I mean, when you think of uncontrolled tire, you think flying away from everyone. Uh, but, you know, when it's you can't really calculate arm length, you know. Yeah, I mean, uh, like the, the tire carrier put his arm right there. I mean, he's at arm length, he touched the tire, but I ain't sure what, when he turned. Or I, I, don't, I don't know all the... <laughs> The, yeah, the technical rules right there is it's like a big judgment call, really. It seems like a really picky penalty because I mean, do you do you really think that needs to be something you get sent to the back for just because a crew member was you know this close to the tire, maybe or this close from being in the good or not in the good? It's it's hard it's hard as a hard judgment call to really tell. Uh, what's happening I did see one of Jimmy Johnson's uh, where the crew member was working on the wedge of the car yeah and that the car the tire was unattended but he did not get the penalty but yet Logano's was so it, it's like a very 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 fine <laughs> yeah <laughs> so as long as the crew member is working on something else maybe I don't know that, that seems kind of wrong yeah, it's kinda... so, I don't know <laughs> And then it would be Hamlin versus Kyle Busch for the stage win, and Hamlin would win stage two. Yep, and like Darrell Walter said, that um, usually when whoever wins stage two at Texas, you end up going win. Yeah, so teams are going to really look forward to going back to Texas in the playoffs and saying we just need to win stage two. <laughs> yep, and I believe after that caution there, Hamlin got another penalty, didn't he? Yes, uh, he and Kevin Harvick had an uncontrolled tire after that pit stop. So Hamlin did not overcome not one, but two pit road penalties. And he, and I believe he missed pit road twice. Yeah. <laughs> so he had a really great car. It's just he never got to put it to its full potential until... He was really the, trying to lose this race. <laughs> yeah. It's like, man, I already got a win. <laughs> no, you take it. No, no, no. <laughs> No, you deserve the win. Man. No, it's fine. <laughs> so on the pit stops, Ryan Blaney would stay out to start stage three. Martin Truex would lose a ton of positions because of uh, some sort of roof flap issue. Yeah, I knew it was working on it a little bit. I ain't sure if it was coming up or not sealing good or what it was. But, uh, yeah, Ryan Blaney, he had he had a really strong car. You know, he could come through the field and he was uh, he could make some passes and. Uh, once he got the lead here, he just took off. Then Logano would have too many men over the wall because he was having a hood pin issue. The front of the hood would... You know. I didn't understand <laughs> that. I mean, he's like coming down the straightaway and it just, it just buckled down. I was like, that's, <laughs> that's weird. Yes, I believe it's something with the brace or something. Yeah. So, uh, a lot of weird issues for Team Penske <laughs> today, which we will get in more in just a little bit. Yep. Uh, so... Uh, Logano would be like a lap down after, you know, I think he had, you know, if not the fastest car, the second fastest car yeah. to maybe Hamlin, uh, then to get a lap down because of the, the mechanical issues. Yeah, maybe somebody was playing April Fool's jokes on Pinsky. <laughs> You're uh, going to win. Uh, before <laughs> April Fool's. <laughs> yeah. So Ryan Blaney would lead, and then it would be Daniel Suarez versus Ryan Blaney for lead, so that's... Yeah, Suarez, Suarez really hanging with him, and he had a really strong car, and it's really good to see the 41 car up there with Daniel Suarez. 
the pulmonard he'd have some sort of issue had that hit at to come down pit road uh, he was in the top five before that so mm. that's really unfortunate and then he would have a i believe he had a penalty after that too so very unfortunate mm-hmm. and then after that kurt bush would have a vibration that has to come in and he was running really great yeah he come in a unscheduled pit stop and I mean, it's a little bit too early. The Ryan Blaney would be on pit road with about 116 to go. And he he had like a second lead over Suarez and about three seconds over Kyle Busch. It looked to be like Blaney's day. But then he would blow up. Yeah, there's a little couple puffs of smoke. And uh, I really hate, believe that he, he probably had the fastest car. And it probably made him real sick too to, <laughs> so, so, I'm leading the race and I blow up it's like if the car's going to blow up blow up when I'm in 10th not first you know uh, it reminded me of the F1 race earlier that day yeah they really cleaned up all their stuff on pit road uh, they had no really issues on pit road today it was really had some good stops and what happens on track <laughs> messes up so uh, he's yeah. going through some it's really bad luck. <laughs> really odd that Team Penske was just plagued yeah during that race uh which uh joe gibbs had their share issues hamlin uh, had all those penalties and then eric Jones spun uh, but that was still able to rebound from them all as yeah. you can tell by the thumbnail of this video yeah and see uh team pinsky i think the only thing that beat them was their sales yeah <laughs> and then uh yeah, at that point, Hamlin would have another issue trying to get the pit road. <laughs> so he really did not want to win this race. Yeah. And then Kyle Busch would be right behind Suarez after all the pit, uh, pit stop cycle out. And Kyle Busch would eventually use a lap car as a pick to get around Suarez, and he would get to a pretty big lead. Then we'd have a caution for Daniel Hemrick uh, for a tire blowout. Yeah, it's unusual. Uh these tires blowing out uh, because the the tires are really hard um you know they brought, they brought a really good tire from good year and uh it's holding up and ain't sure if he just got a cut tire or what happened yeah maybe with all the downforce of the cars maybe that has yeah. something to do about it because they're never really getting off the throttle really they're just yeah. you know always 100 percent unless yeah. you're under someone yeah the right rear is you know if we if he might have made contact with somebody or what it was. And then Eric Almirola would stay out. Eric Jones and Chase Elliott would follow as well. And Eric Jones would get the jump on the restart. It looked like whoever was in second was really good for the restart. Yeah. And then Kyle Busch would eventually take the lead from Eric Jones. And then something we do not see every day is Kyle Busch losing control of the car. Yeah, something happened on for the PJ one or, or what it was on the track is it starting to wear off or what it was and uh, his car just shot up the track. I mean that's unusual. Yeah, I couldn't tell if the PJ one really helped the racing or or hurt it because it seemed like they still couldn't use the upper groove at all, uh, especially to make a pass. He couldn't really do anything. Yeah, there's it maybe like two lanes they wouldn't really couldn't get another lane up. Or something. Yeah, so. Uh, lap cars really made that difficult. Yeah. And then it was like, you know, he's he's got a chance. He's still in the fourth, uh, much faster than the guys up in front of him. But then he would hit the wall, which is uh, very, unusual. very, very unusual because, you know, it wasn't like a, a tire issue. He, he just lost it, just trying to get too much out of it. And you can't really get much more out of the cars. You're already going... 100% on the throttle. You yeah. can't do anything different than change your line. Uh, so, it's just searching for something different and it didn't work. Yeah, I believe you come in the pits because everybody's going to pit anyway because nobody can make it to the end. So, I was wondering if if he can make his way back up to win the race. Uh, but also, Clint Boyer was making his way through the field. Uh, came from like 7th or 8th. Made his way up to 2nd. Yeah, he was really coming at that part of the the, the, that stage there towards the end he was really uh, picking up some speed the Denny Hamlin just had a little bit better of a pit stop uh, I don't know what happened to Eric Jones after that restart or after the, the pit cycle because he was you know pretty fast he was in front of Hamlin but then after all that cycle he was very far back yeah I believe they had a 
bad stop on their pit stop. Uh, I ain't sure if like Clint Boyer or he might have took more gas than Denny did or because I know he was right on his tail when, uh, when he came into pits and when he come out he was like two seconds back so uh, I'm not sure if Denny just got a better launch coming off or what it was yes yeah, so that probably was uh, the case it would have been really interesting if we had another restart Especially yeah. like the only really great racing we saw was on the restarts, yeah. uh, which has been a, a common theme throughout all these uh, races with the 550 horsepower engine. Uh, so it would have been interesting, but uh, that did not happen. And Denny Hamlin would go on to win race number two of the season. Yeah, so so far, uh, there's been Joe Gibbs and Pinsky cars. Yeah, they have it. Uh, Anyone not named Penske or Joe Gibbs has not won a race since Texas <laughs> lived last year. So they keep taking turns. So <laughs> that means Bristol is a Team Penske Possibly. win. Or will we see someone outside, which I think someone outside of that group will, will win. You're just going to have to wait and see who it is in the next episode yeah, cause of he, Fast Picks. You know, Chase, you know, he, he ran very, very good at martinsville so maybe yeah and i'm really interesting interested in seeing uh, how this package will either support bristol or will it make it worse i don't think it's gonna make it worse i think it's gonna make it really exciting because it's all about corner speeds uh, with this package it just depends on if you can actually pass cars this time yeah uh, but before we get into anything else we want to do our sponsor uh, spotlight. Yeah, this week uh, we're going to do uh, Mobile One. They they sponsor Kevin Harvick and Clint Boyer. And I know y'all seen the commercials of both of them. Uh, but they're pretty cool. And it was actually made a little video of our own. Kevin, where you at? Yeah, so here it is. We tweeted it on Twitter, I believe, Friday or Saturday. So. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we just had it crazy a little bit, and uh, Kevin Harvick even liked it. Yeah, and Mobile One themselves, so that's yes. pretty cool. Uh, but yeah, that was our sponsor spotlight. So thank you for uh, being within the sport. We wouldn't be able to make that video if, if the commercials didn't exist, and also yeah. if, if the if if they didn't have Mobile One, then these engines wouldn't last that long. Yeah, probably not. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that was our race review from Texas. Uh, for the rest of the week, uh, Wednesday, we're going to have our bloopers from March. So that's going to be very interesting. And then we'll be back on Friday with our fast picks for Bristol. Then Saturday, the Xfinity race review. And then cup, the cup race review on Sunday. Okay. So stay tuned. <laughs>